This is part 5 of my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. Now we're going to add the plate for the numbers to be textured to and a piece of glass. To do that, I'm going to create a cylinder. Excuse me, a cylinder. And scale it to about the size of the clock. We want to make sure it's inside the rim. Rotate it 90 degrees. And just tweak it a bit so it's once again inside the rim. Slightly larger is better. So, now that that's completed, we need to get rid of these jagged edges. So to do that, in the Attributes Editor, go to the Poly Cylinder tab. This is the tab with the settings or options that you want to change for when you want to change the way Maya originally created the object. I'll set it to 60, subdivisions along the, uh, the axis. Now I'm going to delete the faces I don't need. Since I'm only going to be texturing the plate, or this front face here, I don't need any of these back faces. So I'm going to switch to wireframe view, select everything and in face mode again, and delete. Now I'm going to grab the move tool and slide it into the model. The pivot point's off so we can go to modify center pivot to center it. The last thing we have to do to this is UV map it so we can later apply our texture to it. So on the polygons menu shift set, go to create UVs, planar map, we want to project from the z-axis, which is front to back, and leave these settings at the default. Click Project. So, now that that's done, we're going to add our glass. For our glass, since it has a beveled edge, we're going to start off with a cylinder, I mean a sphere. Scale it up. Rotate it 90 degrees. Once again, we don't want any decimal points, so I'm just going to use the Attributes Editor and enter it numerically. And scale position and re also to get rid of those jagged edges we want to increase the subdivisions around the axis just like we did previously and we will also set this one to 60 and we will also want to get rid of the faces on the back because we don't need those slide it and scale just walk it until it looks generally like this it should probably be a small slight bit smaller. There we go. So now essentially this clock model itself is done. All that we have left are the minute, second, and second hands, along with the hour hand, and the texturing process. Now, since I've already UV mapped it, I'm going to stop this tutorial here, and the next tutorial will be covering nothing but the texturing.